Joining us now is Simon Rosenberg, Democratic strategist and author of Hopium Chronicles on Substack. Uh, Simon, let's begin with South Carolina uh, and what yep. we saw in those election returns. What do you learn in a, when, when an incumbent president is running essentially unopposed in a primary like that? Well, that he's going to win the nomination <laughs> and that Dean Phillips should find something else to do. I mean, Dean Phillips is, you know, giving Ron DeSantis a run for the worst candidate of the 2024 cycle, I think, and or certainly the most ridiculous. And so, you know, look, our, our primary, our nomination is settled. Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. I think Trump will be the nominee on their side. I mean, you just did an interesting segment, Lawrence, about, you know, the legal vulnerabilities he has on the disqualification issue. And Nikki Haley's given him a much stronger run than we expected. So, you know, Joe Biden is cruising to re to become the nominee, raising a lot of money. Um, you know, he had great numbers, uh, jobs numbers on Friday. So, you know, we're in good shape on our side. Party's unified. We're ready to go. South Carolina launched Joe Biden to the nomination yep. uh, four years ago. He had lost badly uh, in Iowa, lost very badly in New Hampshire, yep. then came into South Carolina and won. Uh, and so uh, here we are four years later. South Carolina voters knew what you just said. They knew Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. But 126,000 of them or so said, I'm still getting up. I'm going to the polls. I want to register. I want to register my vote for Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, I thought that with that, the guest or the man that you showed the clip of, you know, was said something really important that he's not noisy. He just gets the job done. And, and I think that that's going to be a huge part of the Biden argument. Right. Which is that the country's better off. He's been a good president. Uh, he's not a he's a workhorse, not a show horse. Right. In the old language we used to use. And he's just making things better. He gets up every day, he goes to work for the American people. And the contrast between him and Donald Trump, who's not campaigning from the White House, but the courthouse every day and is, you know, the most unfit man to run for president in our history. This contrast is going to become, I think, brighter and brighter every day. And even though there have been some tough polls in the last couple of days, last week, we also had a lot of good polls for Joe Biden. We saw movement in a bunch of polls and him ahead. So my guess is that what's going to happen is that as people really understand that the economy is doing better, and that it's a Trump-Biden race, you're going to start to see Biden's numbers come up and hopefully get him a little bit of a lead in the coming weeks. So we're hearing uh, from the Senate tonight that uh, Mitch McConnell is, uh, along with other senators, yeah. at least now, abandoning uh, the bipartisan, you know, border security, immigration bill that he helped negotiate. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, there was in the times past, this, first of all, would have been impossible. But, but if it happened... Yep. Uh, it would have been such a campaign win instantaneously for President Biden. I just wonder if all of this sounds too confusing for the voters who care about this issue. We're going to find out. I mean, I will tell you that having to run on for keeping the border in chaos and letting Putin win uh, in Ukraine, I don't know, man, that's a pretty tough agenda to take to the American people in the, in the coming months. And I think this is a sign of the Republicans living in this incredible bubble that they're in, that they're so disconnected from reality and from, you know, what the consequences of their actions. And they've retreated increasingly into this right wing bubble that's disconnected from the real world. And somehow they've convinced themselves that this is a good strategy <laughs> that, you know, making the country far less safe and making sure the West is endangered and the country, the United States and the world are far less secure. That's a good strategy to get reelected. I mean, I think part of what's happening here for the Republicans and what's shocking is that their central arguments against Biden are all evaporating, right? The economy is strong. We're not in recession. Inflation is way down. Crime is way down. You know, there isn't a war on energy. I mean, all these things that they've been saying the last couple of years are all evaporating. The one thing they had that they could take to the bank was the border. And now they're in the process, I think, of blowing that too. And when you're a party that's been overrun by extremists and extremism, this is what happens, right? I mean, that they make crazy decisions. And I think this is really, I don't think they're going to be able to defend this over time. They may benefit in the short term, but my God, try to explain this to anybody after all the noise they've been making about the border. And when finally there was a smart bipartisan bill, they turned it down. I think this is going to be tough for them. Simon Rosenberg, thank you very much for joining us again tonight. Lawrence, it's always great to be here.